Welcome to day 32 of the Blizzard Buddies competitive group Ironman journey. Y'all nearly tripled the like goal that I had set in the last episode to continue on another month of daily GIM uploads. So I must say, thank you for the support. That was cool to see. I didn't make anything yesterday due to the holiday, but starting today, I'll be uploading another daily video for the next 30 days documenting our competitive group Ironman progress and our continued chase for the world's first journey achievement broadcast. I already know there's going to be a handful more days that I'll be busy IRL this month between the holidays, work obligations, and my other responsibilities. I'm going to make sure that if need be, I can pre-record some content to be scheduled for some of those days. My channel grew by over 1,300 subscribers in this last month, so that was also really cool to see. And now I'd love to see if I can hit 5,000 subscribers before the new year. That would be a crazy number. So please double check if you are subscribed. It's free and it motivates me to keep making these videos. Just before the clips start, I want to hype everyone up for this upcoming month of Blizzard Buddies progress. I want to set a couple of goals as an individual and for the team this month that I think are ambitious, but attainable. Individually, I'd like to have at least 599s by the end of this month and a quest cape. I'd like to have at least one tier 92 weapon or better in any style. I think it would be spectacular to have the first of my 99s be invention so that I can wear an untrimmed invention cape on an Iron Man. I think that alongside my main Iron Man's untrimmed archaeology cape would be a really cool flex. As a team, I believe we can finish the tier 10 journey achievements and I believe we can all earn quest capes. I also think that as a team, our accounts will finally become respectable and established enough to take on all PVM encounters. So hopefully this month we'll get our first raids completion and take on things like Virago, AOD, and Zamorak. Like I said, definitely super ambitious, but I think we can do all these things. Anyway, that's enough discussion for now. I hope you're excited for month two of the Blizzard Buddies and enjoy the clips today. First rune crafting level today, 59. I wanna get to 61 for the Prisoner of Glufri. Here comes 60 rune crafting, nice little milestone. Getting closer to having all my stats in the level 60s or higher. Minus invention, of course. And there we go, 61 rune crafting. That is all the level requirements that I need for the Prisoner of Glufri, which has some pretty huge XP rewards, including, I think it's a 60,000 experience agility lamp. So definitely want to do that before Prif. All right, train in some agility the old fashioned way. And here I am gonna get my first level of the day. Here's 63 agility. There we go, 63 agility. Also look in the chat there, the size two CGIM team has a really great name, the Goofy Groupers. That's gotta be probably one of the best names of all the group Iron Man teams out there. There's 64 agility. Of course the end goal is 75, but I'll actually be pretty excited for just hitting 70. Unlocks a lot of really useful shortcuts. The one that comes to mind immediately is in the Taverly dungeon. Saves a lot of time navigating that place. Right, since I'm so close to a big milestone, I've got enough bones to squeeze out just one level here. And this is gonna be 71 prayer. That's not the milestone, but if you look at my skill tab, that is 2000 total level. So that's a big accomplishment on the new GIM. Back to some agility, here comes 65. Also this penguin that's been running around there just keeps taunting me. I haven't done my penguins yet this week, so every time I try to click it, it's impossible to click because of all the walls. Another agility level. Not sure if I'm gonna have this mental stamina to get to 75 all in one sitting, but getting a handful of levels, it's gonna be really good. If I can do like three, four levels a day, that'll be huge. There's 66 agility. All right, so finally I have enough resources to get myself up to 70 fletching, which is one of the requirements for Within the Light, the penultimate quest before Plague's End. And there we go, there's 68 fletching. Nice. All right, I was just shy of getting to 70, so I ended up making a bunch of arrow shafts. That was taking a lot longer than I wanted, but now I'm just at Draenor. You can buy a thousand steel and a thousand iron arrow tips from from Ava in Drainer Manor, and that'll put me over the hurdle for 70 fletching. The XP from these is definitely not as good as broads, but it's a good little alternative. If you do animal magnetism early on your account, it could be a decent way to get some early fletching levels. All right, so there we go, there's 70 fletching, and while I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade my woodcutting box to a U box. I've had a handful of these pit mini games offered to me and finally I got the easy one where there's like no RNG for completing it. So that's big. I'm gonna get the gorilla mask and I think you're guaranteed a nimble outfit piece if you win 
or maybe it's still a one third chance. I'm not sure, but since I'm here, I'm going to gamble my XP reward. I think it's strictly always better to gamble your XP reward in this case. Let's see how this gamble goes. All right, so my XP reward stayed the same, so no loss, no gain. Big level for me, there's 85 cooking. Since I'm leading the team in fishing and cooking, I gotta keep up with this as much as I can, make myself at least a little bit useful when I can. And this will give me the level now that I can boost for wilder pies, which will be handy whenever we need those for speeding through some Slayer. <laughs> First kill of my Reaper, okay, there's a Hermod plate. We take those. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade my helmet with that. That's great. Yeah, that Ring of Fortune that Accident made after his Zamorak kill in the last episode seems to be a lucky one. Just going to get everything, and there we go. There is three pieces of Tier 70 Death Dealer, so that's pretty sweet. Got the full tank set, and now three out of five on the power set. I forgot to turn on my recorder, but look at that. That's back-to-back -back Hermod plates. You can see my Reaper task counter there. It was 10, went to nine after that first one, and back-to-back -back plus a PR. That's awesome. Now I'm going to have four out of five pieces of Tier 70 power armor. Probably go for the boots. Yo, this was a great Reaper. This ring is very lucky. That's three Hermod plates in, what is that, six kills? That's huge. So that's the full tier 70 power set for me. And I don't even have the tier 80 power task completed right now. But now I can start saving my plates towards that. So pretty huge accomplishment for me there. And voila, look at that, full tier 70 tank and full tier 70 power. Let me take a screenshot of that for myself, because that's pretty cool. This is sort of interesting. When I got to the farm, I apparently completed the entire cow breeding log. So I got myself a shiny cow here. It's actually going to be pretty good, because that way I can save this guy for the archaeology mystery. And then the three Neapolitan cows that I was previously saving in my bank. I can just turn those in for beans. More agility. Here we go. 68. Got one more level for the within the light quest requirement. And then six more levels for the plague's end requirement. So that'll be pretty rough. But maybe there's some good quests I can do for some agility XP. I'll have to look at the wiki. All right. Listen, this account is just stupid lucky on these skilling pets. That's my fourth one. That's the agility pet. At 611k XP, are you kidding me? That's hilarious. Accident has also been really lucky on pets on his group Iron Man account, so... Between us both, I think we have like 10 pets. Definitely have most of them in the group. I think Chills has two pets, and poor Ant has no pets yet, so... I wish he would get one. He definitely deserves one with how much skilling he's been doing and like how far his archaeology is. Give him the archaeology pet at least. But yeah, that's pretty cool. There's Dojo Mojo unlocked for my account. So I've been training agility with this stranger plant familiar following me, and it's been freaking me out once in a while. Every six or seven laps, I think it's a PKer that snuck up behind me. I really should just dismiss it, but it's kind of funny. Anyway, there's 69 agility. Another farming level from the dopamine boxes. These are kind of the perfect finisher for my farming level sometimes. It's like the the frogs and the cows will get me 99% of the way there, and then I got that back up with the dopamine boxes, so pretty handy to still have them around. There's 72 farming. I'm back to doing some dragon farming for bones, and I am kind of gathering the hides as well this time around to try and make a push for 80 crafting, get invention unlocked once and for all but for now here's a mini milestone in 70 ranged need five more levels for plague's end of course and if i do them all at dragons i'll have enough for 75 prayer but pretty cool for me i can finally use my crystal bow that i got from roving elf's quest we'll see if that makes a 
noticeable difference at all in, in kills per hour here. Here comes a pair of big levels. Been training a lot of AFK Abyss today. It's been pretty nice to do, actually. I've just got my computer on the side. Not really having to look at it too much while I do my other work. But there's 70 attack for now, so a lot of big unlocks with that. Of course, you got the iconic Abyssal Whip. You got Barrow's Weapons. And also the Crystal Halberd that Accident got. Can probably put that in storage and could use that for some future melee training. At least until I get to Prif and make my own Crystal Halberd. But following up the attack level, there's 70 strength. They're just about a thousand XP behind each other. So I like training them together. That way you get the double levels. All right, this is a bit overdue, but I've got all my golden eggs here for the player owned aquarium. And if I go turn them in, I believe each one of them gives you a prawn point. So I should be able to buy every unlock that's available to me, which is pretty big. It's going to be a really nice quality of life upgrade for Dungeoneering specifically. Whenever we get the ferret room with the fish, I won't have to worry about having feathers or, you know, putting a gate stone down and going back to buy feathers just for that one room. So big upgrade for that and big upgrade all around for the account. Fishing is even more AFK. I'm going to go ahead and visit my aquarium as well and just gather the seaweed and kelp that I can. I probably should have made a little more inventory room so I could get more kelp. There's a couple of useful things that you can gather from your aquarium. You can make the great gunkins with the kelp. The little oysters that you can open have a chance of giving you spirit gems, which are pretty big for summoning. And you can also get a free clue scroll, I think, every week if you check here. So not too bad. Looks cool to visit the fish as well level from this training session and have a two minute portion of my video that's just counting numbers from 60 to 75 like we're in kindergarten although i'm sure with some of the comments that y'all leave me about my supposedly soothing voice some of you would probably enjoy a segment like that for some reason that's beyond my understanding but i will tell you summoning with blue charms is super enjoyable to train the xp per hour is just ridiculous especially doing this true tav method where you sell your tertiaries to the shop in Taverly, make the pouches into scrolls, and buy back your tertiaries as you go. It's even faster and feels really good to train. I ran out of blue charms eventually and my spirit gems, then I had to do the classic method of actually banking and running back to the obelisk. But even then, this skill is just absurdly fast to train. So I was really happy to knock out another prif requirement and probably the most expensive prif requirement at that. Now all the GP that I get can go towards upkeeping my dailies for a while. I don't think I'm going to do Wild Gethic Sleeps for another couple days, and I really want to get this 75 Herblor now. I'm even impatient to keep doing it with my Jacket Trades. I probably want to put my Jacket Trades on Agility at this point. Agility is starting to feel like a bit of a slog. All right, that's a lot of experience. So there we go. Two lamps gets me to 74. And I probably got to buy, looks like, two more lamps then to get to 75. Which looks like is just the amount of points that I have. Here we go. Big fat XP drop coming in. 178,000 Herblore experience just like that. That is awesome. So that puts me up to 75, and that's another big Prif requirement knocked out. Really happy with that. So now all I'm missing for Prif is Agility, Prayer, and Ranged. Here comes a big level. Here's 70 Agility. I've been doing the bikes because they're just super AFK. And it's like one click. The XP is terrible, but for one click and 15 minutes of AFK, I'm not going to complain. 70 Agility unlocks the big Taverly Dungeon shortcut. So that's really exciting. And honestly, I like having some of these one click 15 minute AFK activities. Sometimes before I go to bed, I just put my computer in the other room, click on this, and then when I wake up in the morning, even though this XP is terrible, I might have like 10,000 more agility XP than I would have had. All right, let's do the level check-ins for everyone as we wrap up the video today. We got Accident, who, if you haven't spotted it already, has made a monster achievement. He's got a clip of it himself, so I think we'll put that in tomorrow's video once he's able to share that with me. But he's got himself 99 necromancy, so that is the first... 99 on the account for the blizzard buddies also a really cool untrimmed cape i know he's not a big fan of untrimmed capes but i think that's a cool one 
But other than that, let's see. He's got 2140 total level. Getting closer and closer to 300 quest points. And I think one of his next goals is going to be to follow in Chill's footsteps and also unlock Vyres. So once we get everyone at Vyres, then the progress is just going to be astronomical. We've got Ant, who is at 1999 total level. Just shy of that big 2000 level milestone. He's been doing a lot of gates of Elodinus, and you can see from the last video where he was using a tier 60 pickaxe, how much mining XP alone he's made just from the gate. He's got 76 mining. Unfortunately, he hasn't had any uniques yet, so hopefully that'll change sometime soon. We get the Iron Man spoon going. At this point, it's not even spoon, actually. He's probably just do a drop. But anyway, you can see that all of his gate related skills are making a lot of progress, especially his crafting. I think he's even done a few of the trash runs, as they call them, the crafting trash runs, where you just go in and craft until the boss kills you, and then just restart. I think you can get upwards of 200,000 crafting XP an hour doing that. Feels a bit like a stupid method, honestly, from a gameplay perspective, but it is really, really good. And captain of the team, Mr. Pub Stomp, got himself full golem outfit looks like two of the rainbow pieces and three of the regular pieces all of his stats are starting to enter the 80s and even the 90s which is just crazy to see he's got 343 quest points and he's got a lot of the monster quests on his agenda so look out for his clips where he's got things like Sliskay's endgame within the light pieces of hate ritual of the majorat all of these really big grandmaster quests as a team, we are pretty convincingly in the rank 1 position with a group total level of 8,479. 404 levels over the next closest team. They were inching a lot closer to us just a few days ago. I think we had like a, a hundred levels that separated the two groups. But it seems that they've dropped off a little bit, so that's definitely good for us. Unless something drastic happens, I think it gives us the guarantee that we'll get at the very least the tier 8 journey broadcast. And that puts us in good position for the tier 9 and even the tier 10 at that point. So that's something that motivates me. I would really like to get the clean sweep on all of the journey achievement broadcasts and get our names on the plaque as many times as possible. I think that'd be really cool. But there's a lot of game to be done to get that tier 10. So can't be too arrogant about those things in this moment. Can't be counting the chickens before they hatch. Just got to keep grinding. Anyway, that's going to be where I call it a video for today. If you have been enjoying keeping up with our rank 1 competitive group Iron Man journey, please be sure to subscribe to my channel as I'll be making daily videos for the next little while. Only around 30% of people who watch my videos are subscribed to my YouTube channel. So please double check if you are subscribed. It's free and it motivates me to keep making these videos. I would really love to hit 5,000 subscribers before the end of the year. So thanks for watching and see you tomorrow.